Hey everyone, Ashton here from Without Code. Today we're taking a look at our before and after slider widget for Architect. Pretty self-explanatory function, but still awesome. We have a simple slider tool here with one main function to present two images for comparison, utilizing this little slider tool here that's user operated, allowing us to compare what looks like the same image, but is really simply two different JPEG versions of our pug friend here. In this case of our live demo, we have a blur applied to the before version of the image, but that's just an example. You can use any two images here to demonstrate any kind of side-by-side -side comparison that you can dream up. Pretty awesome and has tons of uses for a variety of services and businesses. So let's switch over to Architect. And let's scroll down our page here a bit. And I'm working with our method theme for right now. So let's pop into our widgets panel, scroll down to media, and we'll drag out our before and after slider and drop it onto our page into a new row. Perfect. Inside the settings panel here, starting as usual with our unique ID, you can leave as is if this is your only instance of the widget on the page. So simply make sure to enter something unique here on any additional uses of the widget. Next option is slider direction. We have horizontal and vertical to pick from. We'll leave that alone for now, but we're gonna play around with it as soon as we get our images loaded in, which is our very next step. So if we click images, we're presented with a field for both the first image and the second image. But before we go any further, we need to get our images ready. If I open up my finder window, I have our pug image sitting in a folder here, and we're gonna really quick create an alternate version of this for use in our slider. It's good practice to simply begin with your unaltered image and then use any basic photo editor to apply the effect that you wanna have and then save a copy of that image. And what that does is generate two versions of the photo, both with identical sizing, which is exactly what we want. So I'm actually gonna switch over to Photoshop really quick as that's what I'm using here, but you don't need Photoshop to do this. Any photo editor or method you have of generating your desired effect will suffice. So here we have our unedited photo ready to go. I'm gonna hit Command U on my keyboard and bring up our hue and saturation settings. Now, since our live demo features a blurred version, I'm gonna do something different. Let's bring down the saturation all the way down so we're left with a black and white image. And then we'll click OK. Perfect. And that's it. Next, I'm gonna hit Command Shift S to do a save as, because remember, we wanna save this as an additional version, not a replacement. And we'll keep a similar name, but we'll add BW to it, just to label it right. And then we'll click Save. Perfect. So now we can switch back to Architect, back into our image loader, and we'll load in our first image. Great. And we'll load in our second image. And we're already up and running with a visual preview here in the editor, or we can even do a quick preview. And we can see everything already functioning perfectly. So let's jump back into our settings panel and take a look at some of the customization options here. Like I mentioned, slider direction is here to change if you wish. We're looking at horizontal right now, but let's switch it to vertical just to shake it up. Great. Jumping down to Enable Overlay. This controls those labels that you see on the image when you hover your mouse over. We can see these before and after labels that appear as I hover, so you can toggle that off with this option if you choose. And then of course, feel free to customize the wording here if you do leave it enabled. You can make it say anything you want or even change the language if needed. Default Handle Position. This sets the default position of the slider handle upon page load. So leaving it at 50 plops it right in the center, or you can go anywhere all the way down to zero or up to 100, however you'd like it to appear in the browser to start. Move Slider on Hover. Toggling this on removes the need to click the slider. It'll simply move around as you hover your mouse. So let's toggle this on for now, just so we can take a look at that. And then we have Move with Handle Only. Now this is kind of a small thing, but toggling this on forces the slider to be moved only when the user clicks directly on the handle instead of clicking around it. From a functionality standpoint, this is a bit more limiting because the user can't miss when they click on it, but the option is here. And click to move handle, another minor thing, but it allows the user to click anywhere on the image to cause the slider to snap directly to that position. So you have really lots of nuanced control here, which is really nice. But we're gonna leave those alone for now since we already enabled the hover effect. Really quick, let's just jump over to that design section of the panel to take a quick look. We've got lots of styling control here, starting with colors for everything about the handle, including the border, arrows, the bar, and the overall handle opacity. Then scrolling down, we have styling for the labels, if you have them toggled on. You can customize the word font, size, color, and all that good stuff. 
And finally, overlay background color if you choose to add, or you can leave it transparent as it comes default. Let's give this one more preview just to see our changes. And there we go. Our hover slider is now working nicely, and we're fully up and running in no time. So thanks again for watching. Look forward to more widgets coming very soon. Have fun with this one, and as always, don't hesitate to let us know in support of any issues you run into. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day.